This is Joe Malone, and joining me, we have one of the stars of Food Fortunes on Food Network, as well as a star in his own right, hosting The Sizzle with Daniel Green on Evine Live and uh, writing a number of cookbooks. Daniel Green is with us. Daniel, uh, the show is really picking up steam. Food Fortunes, me and the wife love it. It's like Shark Tank for foodies. you got to like this show. Oh, thanks. It's getting some really good cover at the moment, and we're in the second show already, and it's it's exciting. But thank you. I appreciate you like it. Well, one of the neat twists that uh, is is unique to this show that I haven't seen in other shows where, you know, you've got investors vying for, you know, people's companies and stuff like that. You actually take the audience, us average everyday Americans, into account by having the audience members vote on A, if they like the product, and B, would they buy it at the price point that the people are putting it out there at? And I think yeah, that's that was cool. a really good, that was a great help for us. I mean, that was something that the other shows don't have quite like that because they're taking a bit of a gamble. I mean, you're looking at numbers, you're looking at sales, you're looking at distribution. So you've got a few ideas of if people like it, but to get a hands on right there and then a studio audience to actually see the price and how it either tastes or looks and then gives you that response. And we could set the question up how we wanted. So sometimes it was not just would you buy it? You know, sometimes we wanted to dedicate it to, say, mums in the audience or we wanted to dedicate it to people. If you buy organic, is this something that you would buy? And then it cuts it down even more. So we had, we had a really good tool with that. Yeah. Now, does that sway your opinion? Like you might be thinking, you know, this is something I could get behind. And then all of a sudden, 70 percent of the audience is like, nah, I don't like this. You know, it, it makes you realize what the challenges are, but I don't think it would put me off a company. If I loved a company and the audience wasn't there, I still get that some things were too ahead of their time or things that would not mainstream America. But then there's also the PR and the marketing side that I can always help, which I think could change that as well. So I think sometimes like an initial reaction, but it, it is good to have, but I don't think it would have changed my position. I mean, if we got a, a 10% of would they buy, yes, maybe it would have. Now, we're talking with Daniel Green about Food Fortunes, Monday nights on Food Network. Catch the reruns if you don't catch it live. Um, one, uh, one thing that the audience was a little bit hesitant on, but you seem to enjoy, were cricket crackers. Were, were they actually mm. good? <laughs> I, look, if you didn't tell anyone they were made from cricket flour or crickets, no one would ever have known. I mean, there was just not a chance you would have thought about that. Uh, but I do think that, you know, they were a little ahead of their time because they're talking about you know how the world's going to change with resources and what we can actually find and eat. And I think that at one point, we will use different proteins. At one point, it's not going to be the abundance of fish and seafood and other things that we may be used to now. But we're not talking in even our generation. So they're very early with that. It was an interesting flavor that... Uh, some of them were a little bit bitter, but that's actually more, I think, the rosemary they put in them. So I don't think anyone would realize that. And I've eaten far worse in Thailand, <laughs> <laughs> where there was no disguising it was a bug. Now, one thing I found unique on last night's episode of Food Fortunes on Food Network was uh, you think, you know, you come with these great new age ideas, stuff that, you know, uh, will blow people away with the technology or the new twist on flavors. You had some people coming in with uh, great plates. And it oh, seems yeah. like the simplest idea, but nobody's ever done it before. It's a plate with a spot to carry your drink in the middle of it. And how many times... Well, you know, that, that's, been- that's where you kind of really dig in. And that's actually, you know, the interesting part, because there was someone that did something like that before, and they did it on an infomercial, but $20. This is only going to retail for a couple of dollars. So it has been done before, and it wasn't that successful. But then there's the challenge, because it's an $8 billion industry of plastic plates in this country. And then you suddenly got a company that's come out with something that's charging no more than a normal plastic plate. And that's why I was so keen. So even though someone had done it and didn't succeed in it, it was done in a way that really wasn't um, the right price point. But then again, this is something that has a story, and it has to be told. So if you saw the show, and you saw great plates, you'd want to go pick them up. If you haven't seen the show and you saw it in Target or you saw it in CVS, you wouldn't really maybe pick it up and see what it does. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I mean, you look at it and go, well, that is just kind of odd. Is that a serving dish? No, that's, you yeah. know, that's a one trip through the buffet plate right there. Yes. <laughs> and it was, um, it was and the colors and licensing. I'm really involved with them and I really want to get into their business. And, you know, I can help with them. I mean, there's so much that I can do on social media because, you know, I've got quite a lot of recipes and things where I get a following. I give people a heads up on Facebook. It's Chef Daniel Green. And the same with Instagram, Chef Daniel Green. And Twitter, Chef Daniel Green. So I'm able to really 
give people heads ups and, and show people what it's about. Fun videos, great recipes, and putting them all together. Now, uh, there's one guy on uh, on the show on Food Fortunes on Food Network. We're talking with Daniel Green. Uh, that it, you seem to be kind of clashing back and forth yeah. with uh, the gentleman that uh, you know has a history of working in retail grocery stores, yeah. and, and it seems like he's trying to poach the stuff that you're going after. <clears throat> he's going after me. When I first met him, it was an animosity that, you know, it was like that from the get-go. But can I tell you something, a secret? (laughs) He's the nicest guy. I really like him. We're on the phone with, you know, texting each other. He's like, you know, he's there if I want to ask him a question. Same with me. Didn't start off that way. You know, we were going out there and we were certainly trying to do the best we could. And if someone was in our way, we had to deal with it. But we've done it with a great understanding. I've got a lot of respect for him. That's not to say I'm not going to argue with him and I'm not going to have confrontation. But I actually, underneath it, really, really respect and like him. Yeah, I, it, it adds a, a little bit of tension to the show, which viewers like, you know, seeing, ooh, who are they, you know, who are you going to go with? Yeah. Who's going to undercut yeah. the other guy here, you know? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've got competition in us, but um, it's, he, he's a he's a decent guy. He's he's uh, he's got a lot of knowledge as well. Now, last question I want to ask: How long does it take for a product to get out to the consumers to us here in Middle America? Like, for instance, you know, great plates, which everybody uh, seemed to mm. be very excited about. Uh, it, it was on TV last night. How soon till I can go down to the store and get something like that? Well, you see, it really depends <clears throat> where it's going and what part of their level of the company they're in. So, the cricker crickers or crickets, the flour, the crackers. Um, they are not even really in retail. So if you took something like that on, they would need a real big uh, plant to start developing things. And I think it would be a long time. Great Plates are already in CBS. They've already got their product out there. They're in Menards, which is up here in the Midwest. Yeah. So they've already got a distribution. And then I can go in and maybe in two, three weeks, you'll be seeing it on the sizzle on Evine Live and we can get it right there. And then that's another outlet that really could take two to three weeks. So we could act quick on someone like them. They can produce quickly. They can deliver quickly. But there's other companies that might be to full capacity and they came to us to ask for money because they don't even have a facility that can make that quick. So if they don't have a facility that can make that quickly, then what's going to happen is you've got to really be quite a few months down the line before people see it. And I know for you as an investor, it's probably more exciting to see people out there buying the product that you've got your money tied up in. It is. I mean, you can already see the reaction, and a lot of these big companies, they're still pretty tough on you know trial. I mean, CVS is going to try this great plates, but it's how long they're going to keep it going. So we've got to back it up with marketing. We've got to be out there and start talking about it. So there's a lot of elements to it, but I, at the end of the day, I don't always look at it just as a business aspect on how much they're making and how much they're worth and what the production is. I look at the people that have got a passion that I know I'm going to give up. And to me, that's more important than anything. Food Fortunes is the show. It's on Food Network. Chef Daniel Green, uh, one of the panel members, you're going to be on a couple more episodes of the uh, show this springtime. And uh, people can always catch you on Evine Live, Channel 316 on Direct TV. And you've got the sizzle with Daniel Green on Evine Live. That is on uh, Sunday mornings. Uh, every once in a while, you'll have it on uh, different days, though, like uh, Paula Dean coming in. You'll have it on, I think, what, a Wednesday or Thursday? Oh, my goodness. You've been, you've been watching everything. We, got, we had her on Skype yesterday, Lies. She's coming in on the 25th. I've got a 9 a.m. show where she'll be on, and that's the 25th, called The Sizzle. Paula Dean's going to make her debut on Evine Live, so we're very excited about that. She's bringing in some great products like hams and uh, glazes and just some brilliant stuff. So she's going to be with us, and I'm going to be there on the 25th. So, yeah, we'd love to join everyone. And, again, you know, we'll always keep you up to date on Chef Daniel Green Facebook page. Yep, Chef Daniel Green on Facebook. you got the Twitter, the YouTube channel is the model cook daniel green thanks so much for your time and uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to chat again uh, after you, the next episode you're on of food fortunes i hope so thank you for having me